Nice. Uh, hello and welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Uh, back today with a donation deck list uh, from Lauren. So a huge thank you for, for uh, getting on to me about a donation deck list. Really cool to, to put one together. Uh, so this is a green, white, red Maverick list. Uh, pretty much a punishing fire list that you would see. However, you can see that there is uh, no punishing fires, uh, no grub of the Bermelos. Uh, this is very much a green-white based Maverick list with a light splash of red. Uh, so in the main deck, we're just running a Clothus, which is, I think, really good right now. Quite hard to deal with. Um, there's a few ways to deal with it once it's on the board, but cards like Council's Judgment haven't been seeing too much play as of recently. So uh, I think the Clothus is a, is a really nice uh, threat because it also disrupts your opponent's graveyard. Um, it gains you life which can be really relevant when it comes to combat math, um, especially against like decks like Delva. Um, Clots could be really nice at keeping Tarmogoyf at bay, Drotod Arcanist um, at times, um, you know, exiling things like Life in the Loam or opposing Punishing Fires can be really nice as well. Um, and with that indestructibility and not being a creature most of the time, if not all of the time, it's very hard to deal with. So uh, I think God of Destiny is really nice in this deck, especially with Green Sun Zenith, you effectively have five copies in the deck, which is really cool. Uh, and then just really from the sideboard, we have three Pyroblasts and the Cinder Vines. Uh, nice and clean. Um, I was going to try out like a mix of Pyroblast and Red Ele Elemental Blast, but I think we're fine just going with the three Pyros. Um, there's little advantages, you know, playing around things like Cabal Therapy, but I don't think Grixis, you know, Delver is a big thing right now. Uh, so Pyroblast should be pretty sweet. I think Pyroblast right now is the best way to um, deal with Oko right now, especially on the stack, um, where you can trade trade for one versus one v one, um, and they don't really gain any value off it, which is nice. Yeah, Panda, I think I think you could definitely play another basic in this list because of the the, sp the splash being that light. Um, you could probably even change up the uh, the mana dorks if you wanted, maybe Gilded Goose if you wanted to try that out, um, just for that added mana dork that actually makes a red mana. Um, but yeah, it's kind of nice to have a third color in the list that we don't really rely on. 
Um, I do find sometimes with Green White Black, we do have obviously a few black cards in the list, um, and we do rely heavily on, on having that Scrubbling or Bayou at the right point in the game. Um, and sometimes, you know, you can be wasteland a lot of them, you can just not find them early on. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, this should be pretty fun. Uh, a huge thank you again to Lauren. Uh, of course, if you are wanting to do a donation deck list, you can reach me at greensunzenithmtg at gmail.com. Uh, or just chat to me on, on Twitter or, uh, or YouTube or, or here. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to take into consideration the surgicals. This is a, this is a, a green, white, red uh, Maverick list. So uh, we'll see how it goes. The other card that I really like is the Mirren Crusaders in the main deck. I think they're, they're pretty good right now. Um, so that should be pretty fun. Uh, that's it. Let's, uh, let's see how this goes. Feeling pretty good. Maverick's been doing pretty well recently. Um, I know a lot of players have been playing Loam decks. I know Connor's, uh, aka Loam Boy, has been doing really well with his four color Loam list, which is cool. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I hope you're all well. Obviously a pretty, uh, pretty hectic time in the world right now. So I hope you're all safe um, and healthy as well. So yeah, luckily I think, um, pretty yeah glad you're here glad you're here with me on this wednesday night should be pretty fun i do have a um a weekly sorry the, the maverick monthly for may coming out this week as well so uh hopefully it's posted on friday night um that's when i'll get it edited and sent out so for most americans that'll be at i believe early friday morning which is cool uh, and then, yeah, hopefully see you guys on a, at least some on the, on the side on Saturday. But pretty cool to see the, the new companion change. I think there's some companions that doesn't hit too hard as, as much as the others, but it will be pretty difficult to, you know, keep a, keep a, um, you know, a deck with some of the companions in the, in the actual like competitive space. Uh, I think this is okay. It's a one lander, but it's we're on the play and we have Noble Hierarch, so I'm pretty happy to keep this. I think if we draw into a another land within our next two turns, we're pretty happy, so I'm gonna go ahead and just keep. Probably just gonna go for a Windswept Heath to a Savannah for Noble Hierarch. Um, don't really need the red mana right now, and I want to be able to cast, if I draw into another Noble Hierarch and lose this one, I want to cast that and also hold up Swords to Plowshares, so... Um, I think there's some room for Yurion and also Gairuda. Obviously, nowhere near as good as they were, but I think some of those decks can, you know, take the turn to actually put it into their hands and then try to go off, but it's pretty hard. I definitely would love to see people playing around with them and seeing if they are still capable or not. Up against Slod. I don't think we've played before. Caracas Vile. Okay. So this could be a few decks. It could be Death and Taxes. Uh, it could be Humans. It could be Esper Vile. Um, we didn't draw the land. So I think here I just want a Green Suns for Birds of Paradise. It's a source of red mana if we need it. Um, and it's also just another creature that can't be hit by something like... Um, Frexian Revoker. We do have the swords, which is nice, but um, I think it's okay just to break out our spells. If it is Esper Bi Vial as well, I kind of want to play around Plague Engineer a little bit, which getting a bird and a human into play does that, which is nice. Port. Okay, so it is going to be humans. Sorry, death and taxes. This is fine. Wasteland. Interesting. So I kind of want to hold the swords up here for a Mother of Runes, which means that I can't really play out any of my spells because I can't pay for them with Wasteland. I could play the Thalia, but with the Krakus out and also holding us off from casting the Swords to I don't really want to. So I think here it's just a case of playing Wasteland. Can definitely attack with the Birds of Paradise and then just hold up a Swords with the uh, Noble Hierarch. Uh, 
Blowing up the vials also a consideration. I don't really want to lose both these swords to a mum, so I'm pretty happy just to deal with it here. And then keep the other one for probably a threat. Um, do I want a wasteland here? I don't think I do. I want to try to get as much information as possible. And especially with this mum on the field, they're most likely going to port our savannah anyway, so we can use our swords at instant speed. So I'm not uh, too unhappy just to pass here. What we can also do is deal with the mum and also use Kusali Prime Mage on the vial while they're, while they're tapped out. So they most likely go after the savannah here. Now we can go after the mum. Green Suns. That's pretty nice. We can go and get Scrib Ranger, which nets us two mana to then play Quisali Prime Mage. But I kind of just want to deal with the Vile now and then probably take out the Caracas in the following turn. Interesting that they did what they did. So they activated they activated Vile in upkeep, put in Mum, and then ticked it up to two tapped, where they still had a Caracas open. So not sure why they didn't just keep the Vile on two open. Maybe they don't have a two drop in hand. But yeah, pretty interesting. Recruit is okay. Recruiter most likely getting Flick Flicker Wisp. Just to start a bit of the Recruiter chain. Stoneforge, okay. Another mum, wow, okay. That's going to be a little bit tough. Knight. Um, I don't believe we're playing Blast Zone. Hmm. Scrib Ranger here is free, so I don't mind going for Scrib Ranger off the Green Sun Zenith. There's not too many cards in the deck that I, I really want to go for. So we can... With three mana, we can go and get Green Sun Zenith. We can then untap the Noble, return the Savannah, play it. Um, so we'll have another three mana. So we can go Scoob Ranger and Knight, which is pretty good. I don't mind that play. You can also Green Suns for Clots for the grind. Yeah, that's very true. Um, I wonder if it's an issue that our graveyards won't fill up too much. Hmm... I do like Scrib Ranger because it allows us to play around these ports a little bit. And we know that uh, Stoneforge is coming down, so most likely a Jide. So I think having a bigger creature on board than everything else is pretty good. There's also a case for Collector Oof, but I think here Scrib Ranger is fine. And then we can untap Noble, return the Savannah. Play this. Play the knight. And just pass. But it's tough. There's a few sort of big threats right now. One is the online mum. The second is the stone forge that's about to come down. And then there's the up and coming Jide. I assume it's going to be a Jide. I don't think you get better skull in the face of this knight being just a bigger threat. But at least we're getting close. Um, to having a few blockers. So the mum might be able to give protection from one color but not another. They're going to play the Jide. Okay. Um... 
Uh, I don't want to do anything here. Let's untap. Another wasteland. Interesting. Barbering's interesting. We do have fiery con uh, fiery justice. Fiery justice has been pretty good in testing, so I was a pretty big fan of it. Uh, yeah, Dukes or Doug. Um, either is fine. Muzzable. Hopefully it's Muzzable. <laughs> uh, so do I want to... If I want to deploy this Thalia, then I want to take care of the, the Caracas. And I think I do just because... I want to have First Strike on the field, which kind of makes the Mum uh, do at least something. I can play the Mirren because I can untap. But I think I'd rather have the Savannah in play. I'm probably happy just waste something now as well. My only thought is if they tap one port to activate the Jide, they only have one open. And what I can do if they get pro uh, white to the Stoneforge Mystic is I can fetch up Dried Arbor, which blocks with the Scrib Ranger to kill the Stoneforge Mystic. So I think I, I'd rather just keep the Wasteland up in case they have a port up in their attack phase. So we can actually destroy the port before we want to get Dried Arbor and block with Dried Arbor. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. I can actually, um, yeah, I can block with Arbor and then bounce with the Script Ranger. That's a lot better. Swords on Knight. Huh. Well, I'm pretty happy to waste here first. They'll probably float a mana so they can activate the Jide. Hmm. Which is going to be fine. At least Thalia did tax that, which is nice, because the extra mana definitely um, is, is something that comes up. So now they have to really choose between tapping down the, the Dried Arbor and Passing Turn or equipping the Jide, which I assume you just equip the Jide here. But they're going to tap down the Dried Arbor. Interesting. That's going to be fine. All right. Swords. Of course we draw swords. Um, we can attack with the Scrib Ranger, or we can keep it back. I think attacking with the Scrib is fine, but maybe having the Scrib and Dried Arbor, no, nah, that's going to be okay. I can attack for two in the air. Sword is a perfect top deck. I think if I don't top deck Sword there, I think my only other top deck that's relevant is maybe Collector Oof. Now it's a case of, do I want to Swords the Mum in response to them giving pro, or Swords the Creature? And I think it really depends on how they actually go about attacking. This is fine. We still have two mana open without this. So definitely going for first strike. Mum gives pro. 
So I think the issue is that if I don't Swords the Mum here, we're back to square one next turn. But sadly, I feel like that's just something that we have to do. We have one sword left. Hmm. Yeah. It's uh, it's gonna be tough because we lose a Thalia and then most likely likely two more creatures here. Probably the noble and the birds. But there wasn't too much else we could do. Port was really nice because it meant we didn't even have the line of like with Knight going to get Caracas and have Thalia as like a blocker and bouncer. But this is going to be really hard to come back from as well. Because I'll probably take us off two mana here as well. I think this is take the draw and concede, unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah. The port answers the uh, dry dubber. So we can't uh, sort of block and then bounce. I'd rather just take the time to maybe... Hopefully get in a, a game two and a game three. Uh, so here I like taking out the four Thalias. I don't mind taking out one Ooze. I'm not sure if this is where I want a Clots. I think I'd rather just want the Knight, the Elspeth, the Fiery Justices, the Cindervines, and maybe the Shifting Ceratops. It is a nice body and it also has Reach, which can be a pretty big thing. I think switching the Shifting Ceratops for the Cloths is fine. Yeah, it's tough because, I mean, that's my third Swords. So if I don't deal with the Mum, then the Mum's probably just going to take over the game, if, if not already had taken over. Which is pretty tough. Because if I Swords the, um... I feel like if I Swords the Stoneforge, it's, you know, putting a, a Band-Aid on a Bullet Wound, kind of. Because I think, I think it's too much as well to not attack, not go after the mum while it's tapped. That's that's the that's the big issue that I had. But yeah, it would have been interesting as well to go after the the stone forge and see how that that um that pl that played out. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Uh, love to play first, and this hand is sweet. Turn one mum. Uh, they most likely have to deal with it, and then we have a backup of a turn to Library, which is really strong. I think Sylvan Library is one of the best cards against Death and Taxes. I definitely always hated seeing it as a DNT player. Are they going to wasteland us? Interesting. Okay. I guess now we do have to draw a second land, which we do, which is nice. It's also nice because we get to lead in the wooded foothills, so they can't wasteland it until we actually fetch. Their own mum is going to be fine. Windswept. Huh. So I can go after basics, which I don't mind. I guess if my opponent brought in Path to Exile, maybe I do want some amount of basics in the in the deck. I might just go for jewels. I think they've already wastelanded us, so if they want to wasteland us again, that's fine. And at least with the Sylvan Library in play, it should be pretty hard for us not to find our um our mana source is later down the down the track. Revoke is okay. Yeah, sadly it was just a rough situation. I wonder if Revoke names another reliquary. There's probably no other big name. Yeah. Okay.
Hmm. I like putting this back, but I like paying for this. I think here I still just want to go for the night. Means we can play a fair ton of things next turn because we can even get Cradle and perhaps get this Shifting Ceratops into play. We do need a second white or a third white source if we want to get Elspeth, Mum and Shifting Ceratops. Mirren. Mirren's fine. Uh, we're getting Cradle by drawing into some sort of removal spell. Yeah, I guess that's that's very correct. Uh, we stand... We can... <laughs> Classic. Um... Well, Beast is pretty nice. They do have the Cradle. I guess I'm not a... I'm not... I'm probably still inclined just to go for... Elspeth here. Tick up on... Knight. And swing for 9 in the air. And then we have... Pretty much lethal the following turn with this Wasteland. They have Mirren, but we can give flying to the knight, which is really nice. Putting this on top. And... Yeah, putting this on top. They do get to trade here by swinging the Revoker and the Mirren at Elspeth, which I don't have a great block for. See what they have as well, because the Revoker also just shuts down the Elspeth, yeah. If they have a source to Plowshares, they could also name the Mum and then attack into Elspeth. Hmm. Interesting. That line actually means they can't attack because this kind of makes me know that, I, that they don't have a source to plowshares. So there's no reason to attack with creatures because they're not really doing anything. Hmm. I know the knight is pretty nice. They do have these revokers, which is a little bit annoying. Put on top, put on top. So we can pretty much play a free mum. Nothing of theirs can block. There's no real reason to attack with the knight here. We don't have swords to plow shares and we can't really show it off. I assume my opponent just blocks and gives protection. I'd probably rather just hold it back. Hmm. I'm definitely attacking with the questing beast. Putting them to seven. Hmm. 
Why would I attack with the knight? I would attack with the knight if I want them to use the mum, which doesn't really do anything here. I guess it incentivizes them to block and give protection, which might actually work for me further down the track when we actually have a swords and attack with the knight. Then they might be inclined just to do the same thing, not thinking that we actually have the swords that time. I'm just going to go with the beast. They also have like eight minutes on us, so I do have to play a little bit faster. Chite. Uh, Jite's okay. Can't do anything there. Uh, of course, questing beats with the knight means we can just attack because protection does nothing. I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an idiot. Ugh. Okay, well, there's swords. Uh, okay, let's go put on top. Put on top. I, there's always one line of questing beasts that I just forget. That does nothing. I guess I can save this one if I want. Yeah, Trample does it. Nice. Uh, same thing. Yeah, nearly missed the Trample. So many... <laughs> uh, Maverick's definitely got a fair lot of new cards to play with, which might not be that new now, but they're pretty good. Uh, this hand is okay. It's pretty weak to a turn one mum, but I do like having Kusali Prime Mage in. Um, some early mana, which is nice. I'm going to keep this. I don't think this is, a, this is a hand that I really want to mull against. Vile's kind of perfect. No mum is really nice. Sin Divines. Interesting. That's fine. Swords. Interesting. So I can play Pride Mage out or just hold up swords for the vial. I think I just have to keep up the swords because otherwise I don't really have a great answer to Mother Runes, unfortunately. But it only puts me back a turn, which is nice. See if they have it. No, okay. Hey, Juwan, thank you. 
Currently in game three against Devon Taxes. No second mana. Interesting. Oh, they're going to attack. Huh. Well, am I happy to trade here for a Dried Arbor? I think I am. Even though it turns off red mana, it does turn the Noble Hierarch back on. If they want to Swords this, that's more than fine. It's one Swords down. Although it's trading away mana, it's turning the Noble Hierarch back on for now, which is nice. And it's also taking away a creature that I don't really like playing against because of how it interacts with protection. Okay. That makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> yeah, DNT is a really fun deck. Nice creature based deck. Definitely rewards you for tight play, which is always nice. Fiery Justice. Interesting. I don't think there's a 2-drop here that uh, punishes me for attacking here with the 2-3. I think it's okay just to attack there. File is fine. Hopefully just a Stoneforge Mystic. Okay. Jude's okay. Hey Julian, very well thank you, how are you? Hope you're well. Definitely thinking of time here. So if I if I don't reply to you in chat, I'm just trying to hopefully win this third game and start up our league with a 1-0 victory. Opponent has five cards in hand. I think a fetch here or a red source is just perfect because then the uh, the fiery justice is along line. Green suns. Hmm. I don't mind going for birds here and then just holding up swords. This also holds up. Uh, Quisali Pride Mage, which is nice. Hey, thank you very much. That uh, that was pretty tough. Uh, I believe it was against uh, Garuda, and we had a we had a pretty good start. So uh, you know, congrats to my opponent for. I think it was a uh, Shake Lion actually, and they were also on a four. Um, a four O streak. So very cool to see them get the five O. This is fine. Are they activating Vile as well or not? They're not. Okay. That makes me think they have Flicker Wisp and they're just trying to save most likely Jade here. Still at three. Okay. Ah, oh, interesting. Okay, so this is gonna be this is gonna be cool because we can block with the the Quasali Prime Mage, allow damage to occur. We kill the Stoneforge Mystic, and then the trigger on the stack we can take care of the uh, the, the Jide. So let's block here. A two two on a one two. Damage happens. Now with the trigger on the stack, we can deal with the Jade. So we kind of two for one them, which is pretty nice. This also means if they want to save it, they have to use Flicker Wisp here. Which is going to be fine because we have this Fiery Justice now set up with the Birds of Paradise. Whew. Very cool.
Jude comes back. That's going to be fine. Noble. So this probably just makes me want to go for Fiery Justice here as just a two for one and then actually build out my board. I don't mind that. Want to wait for them to equip? Um, I guess because I kind of want to build up my board. I'm not really doing anything else. I guess I could also just hold up swords to plowshares and play the knight. I don't mind that. It kind of leads to the same thing. Hmm. I guess I can also just play the hierarch and then hold up fiery justice. That's okay. And I can still attack with this noble hierarch. Just to keep damage damage going. Because this is, you know, getting down to five minutes for me. Oh, it's not instant speed. There we go. Yeah, I think I'm okay with using it now. Oh, shit, I can't. Haha, <laughs> the wasteland. Okay, well now we just have to rely on sorts of plashes. I guess we could have also played the cinder vines, which is probably correct. Instead of just holding up the swords to plowshares. Because I'd probably rather keep the swords for our mother of runes. Hmm. Yeah, we can't keep it up. That's correct. This is okay. I want a swords in probably combat. So at least I can block with ma uh, with our... Uh, birds here just to stop the three damage as well block and then before damage we get priority we can swords the flicker wisp i guess if they have an another one it's it's kind of annoying but they don't which is nice wasteland Uh, that's fine. Can't do anything with it. Swords. Three mana. Probably don't want to attack with Noble Hierarch in case they have Moon Crusader. And if we want to Swords the Crusader, then we can't uh, hold up the Cinder Vines. Flicker Wisp, okay. I think here I just want to pull a pin on the Cinder Vines and hit the uh, Jide. Just so they don't have Flicker Wisp up to actually deal with it again. This also means we can just 6 this turn, which is kind of nice. Just from a time perspective. I wonder if they activate Vile now just to get some recruiter value. Because hitting all four would be great with this uh, Fiery Justice.
I'm not going to Swords the Mum now because they can say it with Liquid Whisk. I'm just going to rely on them activating it in their end step, hopefully. Okay. Uh, this is going to be okay. We can wait to see what they put in. Most likely Flicker Wisp. And probably flickering the Recruiter of the Guard so they just have the extra. Yep. Um, so this is going to be fine. I might as well just Swords this now. I guess I could wait for them to actually find their Recruiter target, which most likely is just another Flicker Wisp. But, you know, Swords in there does give them more information about the Recruiter of the Guard and what they want to get. So, in a paper tournament i'll definitely wait for them to actually get what they want to get the with the recruiter and then swords the uh mother of runes but this fiery justice is looking better and better but the vial is just making it a little bit rough I wonder if it's time. I think it is because then we can just play the knight. We get to deal with at least one of these. I could have dealt two to them as well, but this is fine. Wisp most likely saving the recruiter. So hopefully they don't save the... I guess it doesn't matter because the Revoker gets flipped anyway. We get to play this knight no matter what. I'm going to save the other Wisp. Ah, oh, because we're at six. Yeah, that's just game. Uh, yeah. Rough. Should have thought of that. I don't think about the, uh, the, the damage that I lost from the Horizon Canopy. That's pretty rough. But tough game. Definitely a lot of uh, like just micro decisions that added up along the way. Even just not dealing with the Revoker early on. I think the, the Fiery Justice was just a little bit of tunnel vision in that I really wanted to get as much value as I could when early on I could have got a two for one. That would have been great. I could have hit the Revoker and also a Recruiter of the Guard, I believe. Which I think was just correct. I mean, if I'm, even if I'm getting a two for one, I got to be pretty happy with that. And then also I was getting hit pretty hard on mana. And of course, DNT being a mana denial deck, the more they draw, the more they draw into that sort of side of their deck. So, new league. Uh, I think we'll, we'll we'll keep going. We'll see how this goes. Not really after the the five zero. Always after the five zero, but you know I'm still very happy with the four one. And it's always nice to pull back from a from a first loss. But yeah, very cool to see uh, Connor up in top position playing Loam. Well, 2x. On the draw. Uh, yeah, this hand is fine. Dried up is always a little bit iffy, but I'm okay with this. Haha. <laughs> No, that's fine. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's the first loss of this league. Exploration, okay. Port. Savannah. I think I'm happy to play around... Wasteland for one turn. We kind of have all the colors there. Uh, I guess, yeah. I definitely probably should have left with led with the Savannah here. Because the fetch land means that if we draw into Glots, we can cast it on turn two. And of course, the fetch is just great with things like Sylvan Library as well. Where in this matchup, I want to, you know, maybe put away things like Thalia. I think it is, yeah. Ooh, Tabernacle is pretty rough. 
I'm gonna pay for it with this. So we can actually attack with the noble if needed. Savannah. I kind of want to get this knight down ASAP to deal with the tabernacle, but it's going to be tough. Tabernacle's really nice. Yeah, I don't think it's, uh, I think it's one more day and then it's all done on arena for, uh, for companions. In tomb, interesting. Loam, okay. Well, there's a prime time in the bin, which is kind of nice. Not just because I can't cast it from the bin, but also just that we know what sort of deck this is going to be. Paying for them because Cradle is actually a pretty good draw as well. Huh. My opponent just probably taps down this Tega in my end step anyway. So at least we can hold up the swords through the Noble Hierarch. So I don't want to see a wasteland here. That'd be pretty rough. Okay. Uro is interesting. I don't think I want to deal with it yet. I do have the swords, but I probably want to keep the swords for something like Primeval Titan. Just because Clot's next turn can deal with it. Clot does look good in this matchup, but it is getting to the mid game pretty quickly. And that obviously isn't the, the greatest for me. Library's pretty good. I could also get Scavenging Ooze and just eat the Uro. But they currently... I guess they need one more green mana and then they have it. But we do have the swords for Uro anyway. I think Klotz is just cooler, let's be honest. I think it's still a winning strategy as well. Kind of also means that their turn has to be Uro, which is nice because we do have the swords to plowshares if they want to use it. Yeah, it does it does eat the Uro if they don't have Oh, it's a giant. Okay, so they have the cavern for the second blue, which is kind of cool.
I'm going to pay with these because they're probably going to tap down one of these and I can just use a sword for it. So it makes sense to keep open two white because then we can just use the one that they don't. Screws is pretty nice. Uh, dark depths. Make a green. I'd probably rather knight here, to be fair. I think wasteland's a little bit better. I guess we can actually play both, which is nice. Hey, Tagoras, welcome. Hope you're well. Um, I know you've been streaming a lot with lands, so kind of cool to come up with against a deck that's... I don't think it's... I wouldn't call it lands, but it's definitely like a bug lands type of deck. I'm assuming it's playing Uro, Oko, Primetime, of course. Probably like Field of the Dead, so like Bug Field. Definitely grindy. Definitely my type of magic, which is nice. I'm assuming Oko and Decay is their main way to deal with things like uh, night and scavenging ooze. Speaking of, hey Q. Yeah, it's currently uh eight twenty five in Australia. I think here I just want to keep the scavenging ooze around. I don't really care about these noble hierarchs for now. So I'm going to float green with them, but I'm not going to keep them. Maybe just one. It's having this down, so I'm just going to use it, to be fair. I'd probably rather draw into something like Wasteland. Hmm. Get rid of the Entomb. I want to start dealing some damage, but... This Maze is going to be tough. The one nice thing about scavenging use with Oko is that if we do give it counters before it gets elked, the elk the elk keeps the counters. Yeah, kind of cool subtlety that if uh, cloths does become a creature, we don't have to pay for it because it is indestructible. And of course, tabernacle is a destroy effect, not a sacrifice effect. Bog. Well, I guess we are eating at least some of it. Knight and Noble. Not too bad. Sometimes Bog's an issue for Knight of the Reliquary because it can make Knight back down to a 2-2. Uh, I'm just going to eat the Verdant now. And then leave the Decay for Clots. I don't really care about the screws. Oh, that's fine. Green Suns. Green Suns for Questing Beast is pretty nice here. Which I can do. Because it because Maze of It does not stop it. One, two, three, four, five. So now we have a real race, which is kind of nice. Unless they have like crop rotation for Caracas, then we're looking pretty good.
They're going to try to maze the questing beast, which is fine. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. And now, to be fair, we might even just be able to finish this off with cloths if they don't have an answer. Uh, this is the first time we've got it on the field in this league, but in other leagues, it's definitely been okay. Uh, definitely a big fan of it having like a one of in the 75, um, cause there are a few matchups where it's just really good. Yeah, even I get questing beasts wrong at times, so to be fair, it, uh, it happens to even those that play it every time. Yeah, beasts can be pretty nice with DNT as well. Even though they have Caracas, the protection effects aren't as good through both things like Mother of Runes and Mirren Crusader. The damage still applies, which is really nice. Just a Ghost Quarter. I feel like they're loaming back the Nurturing Peatland. Or maybe all the lands. Just to get them back and try to draw a card. At least try to draw an out, I guess, to the questing beast, but all the screws, they have to deal with both. So they get to draw one more card. Yeah, definitely. I always forget. I remember my opponent had one, and I blocked an Ice Fang Quidle with Scrib Ranger, and it didn't end well. Even though it has pro blue, it didn't end well. And luckily, uh, Beast gets there, which is really nice. So this is an interesting matchup. Uh, I don't believe the Collector Oofs are worth it. They might be playing Mox Diamond, but I think there's probably better ways to attack them. I don't mind taking out the Thalias as well, because I assume they're playing Caracas, and they also go wide on lands pretty fast. I do like the Surgicals. I do like the Knight, and I do like some Blots. Maybe just two, because I assume they are playing Oko, and we know they're playing Uro. Cinder Vines is an interesting one, but I... I think I'm happy just having the extra Knight in the deck. Yeah, I think two Blasts is pretty nice as well. Hmm. I think chat's on a little bit of a delay, so I'm going to quickly change that up as well. But I think this looks pretty good. I don't think there's any other cards that we really want. Settings. Hmm. Yeah, let's see how this goes. But yeah, uh, God of Destiny is pretty fun. I think right now that, that it's just pretty nice not having so much removal around for it, or really any. Shorter delay is good. Yeah, I'm not too sure how you change it. I think I have to mull this as well. I don't want to keep a one lander against a lands deck. Yeah, I think it's that's just a natural lag as well. Um, this hand is kind of nice because it has different answers to different things, like Surgical can answer Loam, Pyroblast for Uro and Oko, Swords for Oko, but the one lander just isn't where I want to be against a Wasteland, Loam, Port deck, so I'm going to mulligan this. This is a lot better because it still has interaction, and I can also bottom the Dried Arbor, which works out really well, so I'm going to keep this and bottom Dried Arbor. Yeah, sadly, I think a, a one lander is a great way to lose <laughs> against this deck. Another Mox, okay. Well, maybe Collector Oof would have been great. <laughs> and Wasteland, okay. Interesting, three mana pass. What, is that, what does that tell me? Definitely tells me that I want to lead on the Wooded Foothills and go for just a basic forest. And Tomb for Loam, interesting. That's pretty good because then we have the Surgical for Loam, which is really nice. If that's going to be the whole turn. 
We can then follow that with a knight on a mox diamond just to take them off more mana. Alright. I think I'm okay playing around the one last card in the deck being a cycle land, so I'm going to hit loam here. Nice. So we'll take this one. We'll see how they actually sideboarded for this deck. No real changes. Maybe like an extra Abrupt Decay. It seems pretty stock standard to like just what a main deck is. So maybe they felt like the matchup was just pretty good anyway. Three crops, exploration, two prime times, three euros. That lines up really well, especially with the um, dark depths with our just four sorts of plowshares. There's definitely no reason to bring in anything more if we did. So this looks pretty good. Yeah, no Oko's is really interesting. Maybe they just didn't. Maybe they played Uro in the in the spot of Oko because it actually just works better in the deck. Ah, oh, I didn't see the other card in their hand. <laughs> Definitely should have looked at that. Maze. Maze is pretty good, but we do have some nice outs to it. Wasteland. All right. Probably could have... Uh, yeah, that's okay. I could have played Caracas there, because Tega's probably the land that I don't want to get Wastelanded. But maybe they're less incentivized to Wasteland us if we're going after their mana early on. It was a maze. Okay. Yeah. I think that was pretty hard for my opponent. They really hedged that first draw on the loam which is pretty tough and once you take out the loam you've removed the engine you just have you know pretty stalemate kind of deck but i'm sure there were some draws that could have got them out of that i think you had to get an euro pretty quickly to start generating some actual advantage but i think taking them off the the mocks as well because looking at their mana they only had that one colored land left one uh, colored source left apologies so a quick bounce back do you think Maverick is viable right now? I definitely think it's viable. Um, I think it's competitive, but I think it's very hard to play against some of the other competitive decks. I don't think it's as competitive as, you know, a Delver deck or uh, like Snowco. I think if you, if you want to play it and have success with it, it's definitely a good time to play Maverick. But... Um, yeah, it's tough. I think I think the one thing that is quite tough right now with Maverick is trying to keep up with the two for ones, like I spend Quadles, Baleful Strixes, um, your Euros, your Okos. So you really want to have a lot of cards in your deck that are sort of two for oneing back. Um, I think Mav's a little bit... I definitely like Maverick because of Green Sun Zenith. So you can play around with your Silver Bullets. You have a little bit more flexibility with how fast you can actually change your hand. Um, so say you keep a hand with a couple of Swords to Plowshares against Storm. You know, Green Suns for Collector Ufo Gadokti could change your deck a lot faster and shift it than Death and Taxes could off like a Recruiter plan. Um, but yeah, I think, I think right now, if you want to play Maverick, you definitely have to play some cards that two for one your opponent. So things like uh, Kaya is really good because it allows you to deal with things like uh, Aether Vial, Mother of Runes, um, Astrolabe, Food Tokens, without actually losing a card. Um, same with Big Vraska. Like, Full Man of Vraska is pretty sweet because you can deal with an Oko but keep Vraska around. So although your opponent has most likely got value off it, um, Oko that is, you're still, you know, you're not going down a card to deal with a card that's already got value. So I think, I think Maverick's really good. I think you just got to build your deck uh, with, you know, your your deck building hat on, if that makes sense. Uh, this is interesting. A little bit fair. I mean, if my Green Suns is going for Dried Arbor. Yeah, I'm pretty happy to mulligan this, especially on the draw. I want to have like Noble Hierarch or Thalia. And now we have Noble Hierarch and Thalia. Okay, I'm going to keep this. Um, and I think just to play around something like Plague Engineer, I'm happy to keep the bird over the Noble Hierarch. So I'm going to drop the Noble Hierarch. I'm 
Yeah, it's pretty tough. I don't think there's too many match matches with Maverick where I'm like, oh, sweet, okay, this is uh, kind of done for. Um, you definitely have to fight pretty hard to get your wins. This looks like a depth deck, which is a, a kind of nice hand that we have, having both Caracas, Bird, and Swords to buy time. And this kind of looks like just a pass, which is interesting. Pedal, okay, there we go. Huh. That'd be a pretty cool move if my opponent was trying to see if we were on a force deck, and if we sixed, then they kind of know that we're not. Uh, foothills. I guess either way we're going below 20. And I kind of want to have red mana later on. I don't have to worry about Bolt, so, you know, fetching this turn to make sure we can fetch next turn to play a 4-4 Knight isn't a big thing, so I think here I'm happy to just go Canopy into Birds, to be fair. Is there a deck that Mav is always happy to see? Um, some say Delver. I find Delver a little bit difficult, especially with the printing of Dreadhorde Iconist. I think Death and Taxes is a pretty fun matchup. Um, I don't mind that. I also don't like the, like, the lands-based decks are usually pretty good. Ah, Rascal, yeah, okay, so you're from Canada, I believe. I believe Rascal is a pretty big Maverick player because, is it the Dead format that did a bit of a, uh, I believe it's the Dead format that do, oh no, it's the, the Canadian Threshold that do a, um, a kind of breakdown of everything. Yeah, I don't think Maverick has any free wins. I would definitely say that. I would say Eldrazi is probably the closest to it, especially just because it's pretty much all in Night of the Reliquary. But there are definitely Eldrazi draws that you just can't keep up with, which are, you know, the Eldrazi Mimic into Thought Knot into Smasher with a little bit more disruption here and there. So the name Nace Wasteland with Pith and Needle. I think here I'm happy just to go for Night and then try to get my Wasteland plan going. I don't think Thalia does too much here, other than affect us with holding up Swords to Plowshares. Yeah, so Pithy Needle here naming Wasteland, which is very fair. Means we can't really get behind. Inquisition's kind of nice, because it takes Sword. I am based out of uh, Queensland in Australia. Which, Australia has a pretty good legacy scene. Yeah, Eldrazi post is a little bit more difficult, especially with the Grim Monolith draws, but in saying so, I think those those mid mid-game um, matchups are, are really fun to play. Huh. So I guess our opponent can't have. I guess if they have like double crop and elvish spirit guide, they can go for the combo because of. Urborg tapping the Dark Depths for black, but I think here we're happy just to draw a card first. See what we draw into. Mum's pretty good. I'm going to keep that we're not playing red from them for now. Yeah, Australia's got a, a pretty good legacy scene. Um, a lot of like really friendly but competitive um, capital cities with a lot of legacy and eternal players. And then also some pretty good events, um, especially in Melbourne where Kland42 is from, who is another streamer. So if you are keen to get some uh, more blue decks in your um, streaming life, you should check out Kland42 for sure. Very good player. I'm just passing it with Bird up. I didn't think I needed to play the Krakus there because they're not going off this turn. And they didn't know about it, so... Stage. So they pretty much have the combo ready, but luckily we do have Mum, hopefully, online with Bird's next turn and also Krakus to keep it off. For now, Hexmage. 
That's fine. <laughs> I'm going to say you play blue a lot more than me, so that's why I called you a blue player. Okay. Wasteland's pretty nice. So now we can just keep attacking with this knight. They've already used the Bajookabog as well, so it's not like, like they can first strike the um, knight and then Bajookabog us to make it a 2-2 two -two and kill it. Uh, I did kind of forget there that Wasteland actually does nothing because of the Pithy Needle. I don't mind just getting Thalia here. So hopefully this can come back to bite us by not playing the Caracas. Because uh, a step definitely gets them through the bird, which would be pretty rough. They do look to be uh, Turbo Depths anyway, so maybe something like um, Not of This World is also in the deck. And there's the step. Okay. So yeah, definitely should have played the Krakus there. Uh, boarding's going to be interesting. I don't mind the Knight and the Cindervines to hit things uh, like Pithy Needle. It's probably it to be fair. I think Thalia is still okay on the play, especially if they don't start with a um, an early start of Lotus Petals. So I'm just gonna trade like this. Surgicals are interesting. Maybe they're actually better than like the other Thalias. It's tough because usually if they've already got a Dark Depths in play, it's because they made a 2020, and usually at that stage it doesn't really matter if we get rid of them because then we're just worried about things like Not of This World and uh, Step or Crop. But yeah, maybe they are better than Thalia's on the on the play. It'd be interesting at least to see. Hey Dark Cloud, thank you very much. Hope you do well with your study. Good luck for your exams. Alright, would love to play first. Uh, Sand is sweet. I'll keep this. Just gonna lead on the Savannah. Hand is a little bit soft to um, hand disruption. Safekeeper. Okay. I wonder then if we go with Tega next turn instead of Windswept Teeth, which represents Dried Arbor, they'll attack with the Sylvan Safekeeper. Yeah, I'm pretty happy to do that. Because I'm pretty happy to trade the, the Scrib Ranger for the Safekeeper if I can. I wonder if they will. Oh, okay. Well, I hope you have removal. No, interesting. All right. Oh, okay. So they have decay, but they're letting us block. Rough. Close. Well, I guess at least the decay was used on the Scrib Ranger, not the Knight.
I wonder if it's maybe maybe it was worth surgically the abrupt decays. They're probably playing a full playset. Hmm, not the greatest. Yeah, they probably copy the swamp here, so now I'm pretty happy to... Probably to sack a Savannah. Hit the stage, and then maybe surgical that. But, because they have the other out... Of Dark Depths, I'm a little bit less inclined to do that. There's definitely also a thought of maybe using surgical when they're tapped out, so they can't crop rotation for Bajuka Bog. Which, obviously, is probably an actual win for us, because it gets a crop rotation out of the hand, but it means that they can bog themselves, so we can't actually surgical everything. I think getting Abrupt Decay is pretty good. I wanted to wasteland the stage, because if, if they copy the Snow-Covered Swamp, then I can't do it after. I'm gonna go after Decay. Just because I think... They probably don't have another great way to deal with Knight. I wonder if they surgical themselves. Wasteland from us. Okay. Can't really stop that. I can, yeah. I guess I also want to keep them off some amount of mana. Three crops and a hex mage, okay. So they have a trophy as well. Needles. Okay. Two thoughts four thoughtsies. Two inquisition. Okay. Once upon a time is pretty interesting. Um, in Maverick it has definitely seen a lot more play in the 5-0 lists for... Um, Green-White Maverick. Not really in any splash color versions of the deck. I really like it in Depths, and I really like it in Eldrazi. But there's definitely people on the fence about it in, uh, in Maverick. It does seem to be pretty good. Um, it does make some of your draws a little bit better. And of course, your starts are a little bit more consistent. Uh, I'm just going to get Dried Arbor here to keep the, the damage flowing. Also gets it out of the deck, which I don't really want to draw. Oof. I'm also okay with not fetching, because I want to keep some around in case my opponent does use a crop for Bajuka Bog, just to keep this knight as big as possible for later on down the line. Hey, Rob Fighting, welcome. In the garden at work, very nice. I definitely like it, work getting out during lunch into a... Uh... So they have crop up. I guess they can maybe crop for... I guess they can crop for a few things, of course, but... Let's see what happens here. Scoos. Scoos is interesting, but there's no way that, that it takes us back to 20 life. Definitely attacking with the knight. Am I? No, I'm not. Because if I attack with the knight here, they can just actually make the 2020. Ah, Safekeeper also changes things. I think sadly we're just dead. 
Yeah, because they also have the Sylvan Safekeeper for Caracas. So I think I have to actually use Knight to draw into something. Like a Swords to Plowshares. Oh, of course, we have Wasteland as well. Sorry, I'm, I'm always thinking that they have... Uh, something else up. The Thespian stages were surgical, not the Dark Depths. crop once that's gonna be okay oh our wastelands were yeah yes <laughs> one yeah i don't think there's anything we can do one two three we can get up to 19 life I think the only thing we can do is draw into our own swords to plowshares to try to plowshares plow one of our own creatures. But yeah, the surgical and wasteland early on was pretty brutal. One time dealer. doesn't do it rough yeah the um safekeeper just makes it so much harder as well because we can uh we can gain three life with ooze by eating two creatures in the bin and also sacking the dried arbor to the bin with night but that only gets us to 19 which is pretty rough so maybe yes definitely consideration against depths as well to try to always keep around 20 because sometimes you can just take one hit and then uh, not really care about being at one life because it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and Bob is pretty good. And Bob uh, definitely plays a lot of Maverick as well. Um, has had a lot of lists in the monthly Mavericks, which is very cool. To see, so it's good to see him up here in a, or them up here in the uh, trophy rate. Swampy Swamp. I'm gonna keep this. This is pretty sweet. Turn one mum, turn two library. And then some really nice hate bears for whatever we run into. Hopefully not something too quick. I think we've played against Swampy Swamp before. The name definitely sounds familiar. Snow. Ponder. Okay. What do they do with the ponder? They chose to shuffle. Okay. Maybe a landlight hand? Thalia. I think I'm still happy just to go for um, the Sylvan Library here. And it's going to resolve. Interesting. Omnitel. Yeah, I was wondering if I should attack with the mum, but just because I don't know that it's not Delva, I don't want to attack with the mum. I think if I find Caracas here, it would be perfect. Because it means we can play Caracas, play Thalia, and then have uh, Chrysalic Prime Mage up in case it is... Omnitel. We can have both Quisali Prime Mage and Krakus open. I think I'm just going to pay the, the full. We don't really have a shuffle effect here, so... Let's go for Savannah to hold up Swords to Plowshares when we cast this Thalia. 
yeah, not too bad against Omni. But definitely a tough one. I'm not a big fan of the uh, the Omnitel matchup, especially for Maverick. It's really your Knight of the Autumn and Quisali Primage that you kind of strive on. Wasteland isn't a whole lot of use. Force Pitch Intuition. Okay, so that gives us the go-ahead to actually start attacking with Mum. It is pretty good. Um, cloth has been, yeah, pretty good for us, but nothing too fantastic. Let's put in Quisali Prime Mage. Grizzle, okay. Do we sword here? I think we sword here just to make, sh make use of our mana. Yeah. I mean, this is most likely getting forced because they can draw so many cards, but I'd rather at least try to untap and... It also turns on, like, if I can draw, like, Scrib Ranger and something else. Like, Thalia. But Krakus is the big one. Because now that they're down to eight, I really want to be able to put it back in the hand. Mirren. Green Suns. Okay, Green Suns is pretty nice. Put on top. Hmm. Yeah. There's no reason to pay here. Put on top, put on top. Play Tega. This most likely gets countered as well. Oh, okay. Go for Scrib. Uh, we can use Mum here to actually turn off a draw from Grizzlebrand. So let's go pro black. Get in for three. And then in our turn, we can use Mum. Uh, and just pass back. If they show and tell again, it's pretty rough, but I guess we just put in cloths. Unless they show and tell and then don't use the pedal. Huh. Yeah, because if they put in sneak attack, then they can't use the pedal to actually... Ah, uh, is this going to get them? They can't use the red off it? Oh, this got Emrakul. Okay. <laughs> That's a bit tougher. Krakus, one-time dealer. Or Questing Beast. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're playing red. It looks like mono blue. Hmm. I don't think there's anything we can do. I guess the only thing we can do is attack with everything and see if they actually screw up the attacks. Because we can use Scrib to untap the Mum to give whatever Grizzlebrand blocks protection from black. <sighs> I 
Because, yeah, we can untap mum. Give pro black. And then they still just take three and go to two. Yeah. But put in clots, yeah. Uh, Pyroblast is great. I don't mind the surgicals with Pyroblast. Uh, I don't think Gadoctique is really where we want to be. I don't mind the deafening silences. I think we can take out the swords. Probably keep one in because of... I don't mind Shifting Ceratops taking out... Knight and Shifting Ceratops for the two Mirans. Screws can come out. Collector Oof is okay at turning off the uh, Lotus Petals. Cinder Vines is actually probably pretty decent. Clots can, to be fair, probably come out as well. Probably go down on a Green Suns and a Mother of Runes or two. If this is Mono Blue, they probably just have Return spells. Not too much um, Sweepers. Hey, thanks, Nathan. All the best. All the best in our Vintage as well. I could also see myself actually dropping a Wasteland to keep something. Teague's interesting. It only really stops Force of Will in a mono blue version. Maybe it's just the consistency of green suns that I want. Could also be a swords to be fair, because if they're also bringing in the uh, the three drop that lets you draw a card and I don't know if they're blue green though. That's the issue. I think they're only mono blue. I'm gonna see how this goes, and then if we do see some green and hopefully win this game too, then we can make some decisions based on that. Uh, this is a one lander, but I think it's okay. Unless it's go turn one silence and then maybe turn two Thalia, but... We do need to draw that second land straight away. Or else this hand is a little bit of do-nothing. Hmm... Does look pretty good, but really got to rely on drawing that second land in the first like two draw steps, or else we'll just fall way too far behind. The Pyroblasts are really nice with Deafening Silence because in response to a show and tell, you can just blast and they can't actually do anything. This hand is better than most sixes. Yeah, that's fair enough. We'll give it a shot. Does have a lot of a lot of niceties, which is nice. <laughs> not even I can't even green suns which is rough I guess we can uh pyroblast the show and tell and then surgical it the following turn which is kind of nice I guess if I'm surgically, I kind of want to do it in their turn because then it stops them from actually doing anything as well. I 
Well, if I'm doing it in their turn, I should probably do it in their draw step as well, to be fair. Brainstorm, Preordained, Inituance. Interesting. So it is just mono blue. And it's really just a Cunning Wish plan that they have to get out of it, which is kind of nice for us. I guess one thing I should have also looked at, looked at is Mystic Sanctuary, because if they had a fetch land, they could have fetched in response to put it on top if they had more... Uh, lands in play but definitely something to be aware of yeah or maybe some sort of cunning wish plan which i'm not too sure what it would be Okay, that's a good start. Uh, and we know their hand, so I don't mind just the Thalia first. It makes the most of our mana, and it also just applies pressure both to what they can actually cast. Brainstorm in response is interesting, I guess just because they want to brainstorm, but it's not like they can brainstorm into force because of the deafening silence, which is nice. Oh, script range is kind of cool. Uh, I should have scripted before because I want to attack with the Noble Hierarch for Exalted. So passing here is definitely incorrect. <laughs> Apologies. That's a big one. It's only one damage, but it all adds up. And it could come down to it as well, as we saw in the first game. Yeah, that's interesting, because I think Pyroblast is probably the biggest reason to play red. Um, especially now that Punishing Fire isn't that great against a lot of uh, Legacies uh, threats. Mainly Dreadhorde Iconist. But uh, yeah, Blue Blast is really nice. Even since they're printing a true name, I think it was, it was quite good. But yeah, it, it is definitely nice as well to have it as a surprise sort of factor card. Wish for Breach and hope to find Petal. Yeah, that's interesting as well. Um, that definitely makes me want to Noble Hierarch. Uh, oh, Green Suns for Collector, perhaps. I believe they had one in hand. Or maybe it was an Intuition. Maybe they Intuition here. Four Cunning Wish. Hey, Beloid. Interesting. Um, our opponent is on Mono Blue uh, Show and Tell. And we got to Surgical their Show and Tells in Game 2, which we just won. Um, so I believe, yeah, as chat pointed out, thank you, uh, Jax, that, um, yeah, I think that only out was intuition for Cunning Wish, Cunning Wish for 
through the breach and then through the breach in a creature off a lotus petal but luckily we could the following turn uh get collector oof uh i don't mind the gadok teague just because of situations like that where hmm uh i guess it does stop breach which might be a thing especially if they see if they're seeing that as a way for us to win maybe they actually bring in breach I do like the two libraries still because of how um, how much we can push them. Yeah, luckily our Pyroblast works really well when you have Deafening Silence in play because they can't counter it <laughs> once they've put Show and Tell on the stack. So I'm going to take out a Mum. I don't think Mum is that great in this matchup. It doesn't look like they have anything other than Bounce Effects. So if they have a Bounce Effect, they have a Bounce Effect. Uh, this is okay. Kind of the same hand before, but a little bit better with green mana. The green mana is, of course, going to take a while to turn on, but I think Deafening Silence and Pyroblast are just so good together that I'm okay with this. Green Suns. Well, I guess they do have Spell Pierce in the deck. I'm not sure if they kept them in. Okay. They do have cities and ancient tombs as well, which is an issue. Okay. Now it's a case of what do we put in? And I think it's Teague. We kind of have an out to Omniscience because of the Pyroblast, but it's pretty tough because any creature is pretty poor for us. Unless we put in the Sylvan Library, but I guess that allows us to dig, but that's about it. Yeah, so Library allows us to dig three for most likely Caracas. Pride Mage doesn't do a whole lot because we don't have the open mana. Teague doesn't do a whole lot if they're on creatures. I think it actually is just Library here. They're more likely to have a creature than both Omniscience and Cunning Wish. Yeah, Teague might stop the Cunning Wish line. Hmm. I'm going to take a quick snip because this is uh, an interesting one. I think it's library just because it gives us more outs. Oh, just a pass? Is it? I guess they can only cast one spell a turn. Hmm. Yeah, I like that as well. So chat is saying that uh, Omniscience, of course, they can still cast a creature through Deafening Silence. So if they had it, they would have just played it. But they can't cast another another spell. So I think I'm happy to pay four for a fetch. Uh, put back one fetch. And that allows me to play Noble Hierarch this turn. Oh, 
I could keep all three as well. Being at 15, we are just dead to uh, Emrakul, so... Yeah, they might do something end step, which would be nice. They're not... What do we see? Land. Pass? Huh. I kind of like untap and just play Gadok Teague. I could also untap and play Quasali Prime Mage, which is pretty good. That means if they like intuition and response, we can actually pyroblast that. They have four cards in hand. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let them play this one out. Thalia. Doesn't do a whole lot on this board, but the extra land does. Put on top. Put on top. I think what we do is we play Pride Mage, and if they want to force it, that's fine. We can then Pyroblast that. They've now two for themselves, and then use the Pride Mage on the Omniscience. I feel like that's fine. I guess, yeah, they, they don't 2 for one themselves with the Force because they can just cast it for free. Interesting. Maybe they respond to the Foothills. No. Okay. <sighs> Hmm. I guess the one card that I haven't played around is Through the Breach. Intuition. I think we just blast this, to be fair. Or do we blast what they get? I think we just let them have this. This is more the filler, and I'd rather hit the card they get. I can't blast Breach, that's fine. They can't Intuition for it, because I assume they don't have three copies of it. This is the type of blue matchup matchup that I like. <laughs> Where it's not just kind of win on turn one or two. There's a little bit more to it. I don't believe they have a creature. Because they definitely would have cast it in their you know, other two turns that they had it out. But hey, Yihue, welcome. Emrakuls, okay. Uh, you can have this one. So now we do have the Pyro for a sneak, sorry, a, um, a show, which is nice. Hmm. 
I'm gonna hold up the blue blue. We don't know what's on top, which is nice. Another library. We can shuffle that away with green suns. Thalia and Ceratops. To be fair, if I'm at 14, I'm probably just paying for this. There's no reason not to. Uh, we can play a land. And then probably just green suns for night because it shuffles the deck and also gives us access to Caracas. Up to four cards. Impulse is going to be okay. I feel like they had the impulse in our turn because they they held up, they tapped their mana and then they untapped to hold up double blue, which I thought was going to be impulse in our turn. But maybe they just drew this and they wanted to signal that they might have had impulse. They could still impulse because it is instant speed and our turn because all they did was show and tell in their turn then they could impulse in our turn. But luckily that's going to buy us some time. <laughs> Deafening silence should have been Phyrexian or Mana. Shut your mouth. You shut your mouth hole. <laughs> that would have been pretty disgusting. Speaking of one mana, uh, put on top, put on top. We can use one Thalia as fodder, which is kind of nice. If they want to force this, that's more than fine. Intuition. Hmm. Okay. I don't think they would be getting forces. They're most likely getting show and tells. Yeah. This might mean that I actually want to go for a Wasteland here. On the Ancient Tomb. Because then they have to tap out for show and tell. They can put in whatever they want. They can't go off with... Um, I guess if they have Omniscience... As well as... Karak... As well as... Huh... Yeah, so if they have Show and Tell, Omniscience, and Emrakul, and we don't know about the Omniscience, then it's pretty tough. But I don't think we can really play around that. We have nothing to beat it. So, because I'm not scared of haste, I don't really care about having the knight open here. So I'm pretty happy to sack a land. And just wasteland them. Because then the, the hand has to be, of the four, land, show and tell, omniscience, hemorrhagal. So within the top five, they need those four cards to win.
So swing four on hit case takes him to 12. And then next turn, I believe shifting Ceratops is lethal. 6, 10, 11. Yeah. So we do just need to fade this. And there's the land. There's show and tell. There's Emrakul. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We could draw Questing Beast. Not a night. Yeah, Krakus is great. Um, put on top. Put on top. Play night. Sack the Savannah. Caracas. Yeah. Nice. So at least we can play for the 3 2, which is kind of nice. And it's nice beating Show and Tell as well. Definitely not a matchup that I'm too happy to play against, but there are some games which get prolonged, which is nice. Uh, this hand is okay. A little bit fair, but the Green Suns definitely helps. It's a turn 2 Mirren, which a lot of decks definitely have a hard time against, so I'm pretty happy to keep this. Your health matters, GG. Thank you very much. Great, uh, I really like that, um, username. It's a little fair. It's, it's a little fair. But the, the, I think the Green Suns for Collector Oof is what really helps this hand against maybe like a fast combo deck. Especially if they're on some sort of Grim Monolith deck. Yeah, I definitely like that my opponent just actually made us have it, which is nice. <laughs> I feel like show and tell should have been not from your hand. It should have been search your library for a permanent and put it into play. Is that is that fairer, Jack? Is that what you want? I guess then things like uh, Grafdigger's Cage stop it, which you know is a legacy playable sideboard card. Grove, okay. Gamble, okay. Please don't put Loam in the bin. <laughs> yeah, it would be one-sided on a Planeswalker that also stops your opponent from attacking with creatures or something. Field, interesting. So they have Loam in hand. Which makes me feel I want to go with Mirren Crusader here. And then... Oh, actually, Mum's pretty good. I want a Green Suns for Scoos when I have the mana available to eat Loam. So I think I'm actually okay with just going for Mirren here. Even though it dies to Punishing Fire, I think they're probably most likely going for Loam instead of Punishing Fire this turn. I guess now we get to eat that, so kind of a win-win. Huh. So the mum is free. And then cradle taps for two, three. Um, I think Mirren was a little bit of a hedge against some of the Bant, Bant decks and Bug decks of the format. It's also pretty nice in a, a list where you can cast it turn two. Um, and with Mother of Runes in the deck as well, you can kind of keep it protected from every other color as well, which is nice. But yeah, Ice Fang's a big one as well. Being able to actually attack into open blue and uh, 
<laughs> blue and green mana is is pretty huge. Blast zone. That's pretty good. They're gonna loam. Interesting. Huh. Maybe just get this blast zone online ASAP. Noble. I really need to find a wasteland. Hmm. Just gonna eat the gamble loam in my mirror and start attacking. To be fair as well, I probably should have kept the gamble there because Kalots can actually eat it and deal in damage and gain its life. So there's, there is merit to keeping the gamble in their bin. Hmm. They have one card left. So they have Blast Zone open, but they're not using it. Protect the field. Yeah, that's fair enough. A little bit hard for them because they are playing against a Wasteland deck. Fetch. Crop. Maybe just going for Thespian stage here. Which is interesting. I think the Field of the Dead plan is a little bit better. Especially against a... A deck that, you know, has so many answers to Dark Depths. But I guess it does buy them a lot of time. Uh, so this is going to resolve. Another sword. Alright. Let's start with swords. They're just going to concede? I reckon you could grind that game out really well. I kind of feel like that, that's a little bit of a tilt that we had it. But I mean, 20 life is like an extra seven turns for them. That's rough. Uh, okay, so for this, I do like the knight. I think we just took out the Thalia's last time. Um, Collector Oof can still be okay if they're playing Mox Diamond, which I assume they are. Thalia's just a little bit rough because if they, if they really don't like it, they do have Caracas and also things like Punishing Fire. Um... Cinder Vines, I don't mind either. I think these four are fine. Yeah. Yeah, which is pretty tough. I mean, that was definitely not game over by any stretch. Maybe it w if it was Caracas, you know, maybe it's a little bit closer because Scooz is eating your graveyard. Um, you're not getting life of the 2020. You've just put all this mana into it. But yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it was interesting because they, they saved the Field of the Dead, which was huge, but then they actually just went for the Duck Depths combo instead, which takes them away from the field. So I'm not sure if it was like them drawing the crop rotation that made them go ahead and actually keep it. Or think that they just kind of had it if, if I don't have it, but... It's tough because then even on their turn, we still have Mum and Bird around to give protection. Savannah. I think I'm happy just to lead with Mum here. Um, and I'm just going to do it off a of basic. I don't really mind if we get Wastelanded out with three lands in the in the deck and also Birds and Scrib, but... Smoke up with planes. I think if this Mum gets a line, it's pretty huge. Yeah, they're probably Blast Zoning, but they couldn't Blast Zone in the same turn they do Dark Depths. They had to wait for the following couple of turns okay hey jacob a huge thank you for the sub very cool 13 months is very nice um hope you're well keen to see you on 
Saturday. We're going to get our opponent here because we're going to be able to Scrib Ranger back this Savannah, which is going to eat up their Wasteland, which is nice. When am I going full-time on Twitch? Uh, when I become a respected Twitch player. <laughs> um, so, a little while from now. It would be cool. Um, I'm nowhere near the... There we go. I know they have the Punishing Fire for the Scrib Ranger, but to save the... Um, the land here is pretty nice. Fetching a response. Return this bad boy. Partnership threshold is 75 viewers over a 30 day period, I believe. Which is pretty nuts. I know that um, Abby or Ali are... Uh, She's an SCG, SCG, SCG grinder. Um, Ellie Hatfield, I think. She was very close to it. She got like 74.5. JBC, I am playing Valorant. Hopefully playing it after this uh, stream, which would be very cool. Sylvan Library here is actually pretty nice because it allows us to dig deep for uh, both Scavenging Ooze. Uh, we can also go for Surgical on Punishing Fire, but it's going to be a little bit tough. Uh, and then also we have Clots, which would be very cool to get there. Yeah, sadly... Oh, not even sadly. Very far off full-time streaming. <laughs> uh, Ghost Court is going to be an issue as well, because this is our last basic. Hey, Jack. A huge thank you for the sub. Very nice. Oh, there's the surgical. Interesting. Um, a huge thank you. Very nice to have you back in the... Uh, in the sub team. Uh, for anyone watching, Kaylan42 is a MTG streamer, and ENR, who just subbed before, is also a streamer, uh, but a variety streamer, which is very cool. Oh, there's Green Suns. Okay, this is kind of nice, because uh, now we have Surgical covering Ghost Quarter, and we can actually Green Suns for Coloss in a few turns. So I'm actually just going to pay for all of these. Play the fetch land, and then pass. What went in, what came out? I believe we took out four Thalia Garden of Thraben, and then we brought in uh, one Cindervines, two Surgicals, and a Knight of Autumn. The best card in Magic. Very, very close. Very close. Are they going to Punishing Fire me? Okay. Oh, are they going to... They're going to lose it here. Oh, they are. Interesting. That's a pretty big pull for us. Nice. And they only have crop rotation left, which we do have the source to plowshares for, which is really nice. Take this. How did they board? Three abrupt decay. Clots. Okay. One surgical. Interesting. All right, that's going to be fine. That's going to be fine. Yeah, big ouch. And definitely not, you know, punishing firing us out of the game is definitely becoming a real thing. But that is a very early trial of, of getting that online. Uh, we don't need to shuffle there because we, we have more cards on top that are new. Hmm. Definitely put this on top, and probably the mum. Because all we're doing here is probably going for clots. I could also just go for another reliquary, to be fair. Ah, actually. You know, they have crop rotation in hand, but they can't do anything with it, because they need one more mana to actually go after the combo. So I think just going for Knight here is fine. It also cl closes the game out faster. They can crop for Bog, but I think that's a pretty big win. Am I happy with the companion change? Um, I definitely didn't see it coming. I didn't see the three mana fix as a fix. 
I think it turns off a lot more companions than I would have liked. But... Yeah, it has its... Ups and downs, I'm gonna say. I think there's still some that have some potential to be back. Go away, Dried Arbor! <laughs> Actually, no, we just put that back, didn't we? No, we fetched, we green sunned. Uh... Let's play another knight and probably just pass here. I could play the bird. Bird is not too bad. Now we can just hold up sword and also just try to maybe even cycle this Sylvan Library into a Green Sun Zenith for Questing Beast for the win because crop rotation for Maze of Earth is probably a real thing here. They're going to make us uh, fetch. That's fine. We'll fetch. They still have crop. Yeah. The Dried Arbor is great with Green Sun Zenith, but so many times you have it in that opening hand. <laughs> it's definitely where you like to have Brainstorm and where I, where I can see Brainstorm being a real thing. Hmm. So I know one card is Crop Rotation. Probably happy just to draw a card, to be honest. They're gonna crop. Probably for this, like, stage here. They could go for Tabernacle if they want to close out the game, but stage doesn't do anything anyway because we have Caracas in the deck. But it's interesting that they're doing it now. They're just getting a black mana. Okay, maybe for Abrupt Decay? That's going to be fine. Now they have no cards in hand. Okay. Well, now I'm pretty happy to go just all out on this knight. Uh, Mum's actually pretty good. I'm going to put... Oh, they're just going to concede. Okay. It was a pretty bad spot for them. Um, to be fair. Nice to get the 3-2. Um, the deck felt pretty strong. I think, I think a light splash is where you want to be, especially with, um, red right now. I'm sure, I'm sure you could maybe find some room for some other red spells that are worth the splash. I'm just not too sure what they are. Um, cause I think that, you know, let's get this, uh, display up. This is a really interesting version of Charlie, Charlie Factory. There we go. Pyroblast is definitely worth the splash, no doubt. Clots is interesting. I think it's good enough to have it as a 75 silver bullet. Um, and then Cinder Vines was okay. I'm not too sure if it's better than having just another Green Sun Zenithable Pride Mage or Knight of Autumn, but um, it obviously does a lot of work against, uh, you know, some of the Storm variants of uh, within Legacy. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't mind it. It, it's definitely very interesting. I know that our Rug Delver players tend to play it, which is nice. Um, but of course, for them, it also, you know, little boosts like adding enchantment to the graveyard for Tarmogoyf. Um, let's open these chests. I believe we've got some chests. Yeah, nice. But overall, the deck was really fun to play. Um, also, just playing the, the three jewels felt really nice. So two Tagers and one Plateau, which I really liked. Ozolith. Interesting. I'm not too sure if there's too many great cards. Oh, that's 125 play points. I think that's pretty high in regards to play points. Dark Steel Colossus, okay. Shrine to Nyx. I'm not sure if that's worth anything because of Pioneer. Or is it banned in Pioneer? Collector Oof. Nice, that's a card I'll play. And last but not least. Fable of Wolf and Owl. Whenever you cast a green spell, you may create a 2-2. Whenever you cast a blue spell, you create a 1-1 one, one bird. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, a huge thank you to uh, Lauren for the list. Um, this is a, a huge amount of fun to play. Um, I have wanted to get back to Punishing Maverick, or Punishing Maverick being green, white, red, because I think Pyroblast is just so good right now. 
Um, and this deck didn't feel too bad. It felt a little bit weaker than the other variants against decks like Death and Taxes because you don't have, you know, Plague Engineer, Abrupt Decay. Um, those are the two main cards. Um, and a little bit of After. Would I make any changes? I don't think I would make any changes. I do like how consistent the deck is. Um, a lot of Maverick decks these days skimp on the fourth Mother or the Thalia, um, or even the fourth Noble Hierarch. Um, maybe one more piece of Graveyard Hate. I don't mind Bajuka Bog right now because against a lot of the Graveyard decks where you want Bog, you don't mind having it in the mid to late game instead of just in your first, you know, one to three turns. So if something like Black Red Reanimator was around, I probably wouldn't rely on Bog as my Graveyard Hate because, you know, it takes a turn one Hierarch into a turn two Knight into a turn three potential Bog, which might just be too slow. But why no Singleton Wild in the Cattle? That's, uh, <laughs> that's an interesting one. Um, I know the deck used to play, uh, there's a, I think it's a 6-5 Wooly Thoktar, which would be pretty cool. It's a 6-5 um, a for Naya colors, but it's just a, a vanilla creature. I think it used to be played in like modern uh, zoo back in the day, and also in Naya uh, Maverick in like the early 2000s, which is cool. Oh, it's a 5-4? Yeah, cool, okay. Um, but yeah, Nicaddle's interesting. I never really thought of Nicaddle. I guess maybe there's a thought as to why you wouldn't play Hex Mage. Oh, sorry, uh, Hex Drinker over Nicaddle. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting one. I know that um, Merit, who did a, uh, a piece on the Green Sun Zenith, did win a tournament last year with Legacy Zoo because he decided that it was quite good against the Delver decks in his local meta, so... That was very cool, but yeah, to be fair, for this deck, I wouldn't really change much. Um, I'm sure you could you could play around with things like Ramen Up Excavator, Tireless Tracker, um, Hex Drinker, or Wild Cattle, um, and probably just the sideboard I think you could tweak. I sadly don't think Gadok Teague is really that relevant right now, uh, even though it is like one of the, you know, premier silver bullets for Maverick since the, you know, early 2010s, but... Um, yeah, it's just, you know, there's not too much that Gadok Teague really stops. There's a lot of outs the decks have now that used to kind of fold to Gadok Teague. So, although you're stopping, you know, Terminus and Supreme Verdict and Jace, you're not stopping Dead of Winter or Teferi or Oko. Um, you know, you might be stopping Ad Nauseam and Tendrils and Empty the Warrens and Massacre, but you're not stopping Burning Wish and Grape Shot. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a tough time for Teague. I, I can't bring myself to drop him out of the 75 but sometimes i do feel like he's just a dead kind of weight in the in the sideboard which could just be a better card yeah i think i think track is a really nice card i think if i dropped a sylvan library i'd probably add in a tracker um but that is for another video um of course if you ever wanted to get onto me about a donation deck list uh, you can message me here on twitter on youtube or at greensunzenithmtg at gmail.com uh, this will be up on my YouTube channel, which you can find me at YouTube slash Dukes on Twitch, uh, which will be in the comments. Uh, a huge thank you to all who followed and who uh, <laughs> came on board tonight with, what am I trying to say? Subs, of course. Um, to the subs, a huge thank you. Uh, I'm pretty close to 1200 on Twitch, which is very nice. Followers, that is. Um, but I don't think I got that tonight. I need seven more. Um, you can also find me on Twitter if you're on Twitter at Dugs on Twitch. Um, and then also, of course, uh, at thegreensunzenith.com, which uh, will have some new content coming out this Friday night. So Friday morning for U USA viewers, which should be really cool. Um, that is it. Let's see who else is playing. Uh, looks like Togores is, so I might send you guys over there. He should be playing Legacy, which is nice. I know he's been playing Legacy Lands for a long, long time. But it look like, looks like he's playing uh, Yurion Aluren, which is pretty sweet. Uh, let's find that. Nice. Again, all the best. Um, hope you're all well and safe. Um, pretty crazy times. So, yeah, be well. Be safe. Thank you all. We'll see you next time. Uh, I'll be back on Sunday morning for a stream. So we'll see you then. Cheers. It probably happens.